Does this mean any of the adults that have maybe Zip comics or um, like Pep comics, would these books sell anywhere near this? Or would you get at least a decent price for the books that were done in the 40s? Anything with, like that was coming out at the time? I mean, I know Wiz Comics probably sells for a lot. No. But no? If you have early years, uh, like you have Captain Marvel Adventures, Wiz Comics, and you have them from the right time period, which has really got to be from the 40s, mm -hmm. and early 40s, you can you, you can get some money. By money, you may get a couple hundred bucks for it. Um, it's not going to be thousands. That's what I was expecting. It's not going to be thousands of dollars. But I'm saying Archie my comics. zip comic, my zip comic, like Archie. Yes, I'm saying I got a zip comic. They cut. They're not publishing any of those characters. Is anyone going to buy my Pep comics or my you know Pep comics from Archie? If you've got a nice cover with Betty or Veronica mm, on okay. it. Yeah, you may actually get some money for it. Other than that, if it's some innuendo or like, hey girls, you know, <laughs> those tomatoes look really juicy. If it's one of those innuendo covers, which they did a whole, you know, they did some, you know, a bunch of them, you may get some money for them. But overall, no, there, there's just so, m Archie is like Superman mm -hmm. at the end of the day when it comes to how many comic books were produced, okay? Silver Age Superman books, one of the, you know, like, why aren't they worth more? Because he was selling like millions of copies, mm -hmm. and he was selling millions of copies of action, and Superman, and adventure. You know, it's, it was all over the place, and world finance, there was a, a lot of books. Archie, you've got Archie, Jughead, Pep, Laugh, Betty and Veronica, there's so many of them at mm. the end of the day. You've gotta find something early on, early 19, you, you know, the, from the uh, the early golden age with them, and then it's got to be, you know, really nice, it's got to be a nice cover, preferably with Betty and Veronica on it, and you can get something from it. Zip? Probably not. Nobody wants it. <laughs> and, and again, oh. this changes because, see, I've noticed that at one point, Silver Age books, you could sell them, you know, with some frequency. It's... Uh, slower, you know, you still sell them, but it's slower than before because a lot of people who grew up reading Silver Age comics are, are to, I hate to say, the dead. You know, these are these are people who are dead or they're not collecting anymore. And so, a lot of the guys that you see having a thrust for it are guys who were collecting in the in the eighties, in the nineties. So they'll come back and buy this book. And, you know, I want to rebuild my collection, that sort of stuff. But they never read any of the Silver Age stories, and the Silver Age stories, to be honest, get maligned so much as being wacky and silly. They're like, oh, this. But there's a lot of great collectible mm -hmm. books there. So. And the other, the other uh, thing about that is that all those ages tend to come back. Most of these guys don't try to collect Golden Age books because they can't afford them, or they feel they can't afford them. And the Silver Age, you know, again, that's just that was a very long productive period. So those ages tend to come back when then the next thing you know, everybody's trying to get a Silver Age collection together. Mm -hmm. So you know, you just have to be smart about it at the end of the day. But yeah, Zip and Pep, Pep <laughs> maybe Zip no. <laughs> okay, so then I will go back to Marvel Comics number one. Would this now allow, will bring back maybe people interested in buying collectors coming back to comics since this one sold? Because I know... You know, comics doesn't need collectors. Comics needs readers. Yeah. You know, collectors, mm -hmm. uh, the average, the, I think the average, um, the average lifespan of a collector, a comic collector, not in terms of their life, but how long they're going to collect, these days is about anywhere from three to five years. Because you start off, and a lot, especially the guys who were collecting when kids, they start off and they think it's still like a Turkish bazaar where you can haggle. How much is that book? 300. I'll offer you 10. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay? It's not I'm asking 850 and you offer me 100, you know, be, because my light bill is 15 cents. It's not, you know, the honeymooners, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's not that time period. And there are still places in the States where you can go and get books for 50 cents, like back issue for 50 cents. And that kind of calcifies for some guys how much a comic book should be worth. Oh, 50 cents, this, oh, these are overpriced. And they're like, no, you're just very fortunate to be able to get those books at that price because of where you, because of where you live. The... Uh, where, where, where most guys tend to lose it is that you know they start collecting, they're able to get some good deals, and then you okay, you got a nice little modern age collection. If you're a Superman collector, you could probably get a full run of Superman from '86 to 2011, and you could probably get that you know maybe for a few hundred dollars, and mm -hmm. you don't feel pretty good about it. Once you start going back bronze, it, it starts to go up. The price goes up. The price goes up. It's not a dollar anymore. It's three. It's like how much is this? How much? And that's where a lot of guys lose it. They don't necessarily have the wherewithal to keep going for it. Uh, they you know, trading is, is pretty absent at the end of the day. You can't get the money. And so, you know, there you go. Those are collectors. Readers are what you want. And it could, 
you know, you want people who actually come in. I want to read this. I don't want to just own this because it's, you know, I can get some money for it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Wizard Magazine. You want people who are actually <laughs> coming in there. You know, Wizard Magazine I thought was a really good in terms of uh, doing some things for comics, but because they were such a, uh, you know, t so tongue in cheek and sarcastic about comic books overall, I think that a lot of guys felt that way about them as well. That the only thing that these things could be worth is a first appearance, classic cover you know, a first cover appearance, whatever it is, and the stories were largely like, yeah, whatever, nobody really cares. Of, nobody mm -hmm. really cares about that. That's not where the money is. So you really want to attract more, you want to attract more readers, because if you attract more readers, eventually, you know, those people reading, even if, they, even if they find comics disposable, you'll get more collectors that way, yeah. and the comic books, you know, tend to get a better, uh, I mean, I mean, Tom, comic books will tend to, you know, to get a better rep. I mean, think about it. In the 1930s and 1940s, if you were doing a comic strip as opposed to a comic book, the comic strip was looked upon as more prestigious yes. than the comic yeah. book. It is now 2019. Mm -hmm. Comic books will get you all of this money, but a comic strip is still looked at as more prestigious yes. than a comic book. And that is, you know, it, in all that time, that hasn't that hasn't changed. So despite the money and everything else that you know, comic books have been able to achieve, uh, the reading is the more important of, mm -hmm. of the two things. I'm um, only add on the, the strip. You have to also imagine Jack Curry was uh, one of the strongest artists of the from the 40s to the 70s. But at the same time, that period in the 50s where he got a new strip in Sky Masters, he got into the newspaper. It was a big deal. He probably They probably made some noise making, I think, a million on Captain America, the first issue. Mm -hmm. But that new strip, and he's only listed there as the artist, not a co-plotter. But he's in the paper, and he, like they talk to him about stuff. So it's like a bi it, that's a big deal. So I just wanted to add on to that. So the other thing... I'll make one correction before that? you go on. Not probably one of these. I, I think Jack Kirby probably was the most plural, you yes. know, prolific artist. Yeah. I have, yeah. Doing my research on that, I don't know if anybody <laughs> else. I just don't know if anybody else was able to turn it out like him and turn it out with such a. Mm. It was good. Yes. You know, even yeah. Kirby's worst stuff. You're like, oh, he phoned that in. It was still a hundred times better than what you would have been able to do. 